Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Ripley Radio. It, we have a lot of weird stuff today. First new episode in quite a while because we've had a nice long summer. But folks, it has been exactly two years since the old Ripley Radio show was revived. Yeah. And what a better way to celebrate. Yeah, woo! What a better ce- way to celebrate than to talk with a man who actually worked on the original Ripley Radio show with some guy named Robert Ripley. So that's going to be one of our guests today, believe it or not. That's going to be cool. Now, let's go around the table and introduce everybody. My name is Ralph with an F, and we have Mr. Tim O'Brien, our producer. Hi, Ralph. Good to be back. Great summer. Woo. Everybody had fun, I hope. Edward Meyer. Hey, good to you? be back. Yeah. Two years. I can't believe that. We've been doing this for two years, reviving that radio show, just months. giving it a, a couple of chest bumps, and boom, boom, the heart started beating again. And, and how many shows in total? 6,390. Fantastic. <laughs> As Tim O'Brien and I know, it's an amazing honor to be in our seat here uh, talking on a show that's called Ripley Radio, which of course was started by some guy named Robert Ripley, but here's a special guest. Believe it or not, we have somebody that worked with Robert Ripley on the original Ripley Radio show. Fred Essex is our guest. Fred, welcome to this version of Ripley Radio. How are you? Well, my golly, it's, it's great to talk with uh, someone uh, who is still interested in Ripley because when you think of the number of decades that have passed, that man certainly has longevity. We deal with the world of Ripley every day, and, and to me it's amazing to think that that one man, uh, 60 years later, is still providing jobs in an industry that's multi-million dollars. It's, it's amazing. Now, um, when you were working with Robert Ripley on the old Ripley radio show, explain how that worked. You were part of an ad agency, and the show was only 15 minutes, and um, what was your role in that? Well, let's back them up for a minute. In those days, the ad agencies controlled all the programs on the networks. Uh, the ad agency was sold the program, and they in turn, uh, I was with Rufoff and Ryan, they sold it to um, American Cigarette and Cigar for Pell Mill Cigarettes. In those days, a 15-minute format daily was a, a, a common thing. Remember, Amos and Andy was on for 15 minutes every day uh, on uh, the old Blue Network, which, of course, today is ABC. And uh, Bob Ripley, therefore, was on a 15-minute show uh, Monday through Friday. And uh, uh, so uh, we had quite an audience, and uh, I was assigned to uh, direct the show, put it all together, all the way from the casting to the actual throwing the cues to the actors, uh, and then preparing the next day at Rip's uh, uh, Central Park West uh, home. So we were quite involved with him, Ralph. He was a good businessman. Remember, he used to be a a sports cartoonist, uh, so a sports figure. So he was easy to work with. He knew his work. He knew my responsibility. If I had suggestions, he knew that he was the, uh, the actor, but he listened to the director, so I never had any problem with him. In fact, a couple of things that he gave me as mementos sort of reflect a very, very good man. Robert Ripley had buck teeth, and that affected the way he talked, didn't it, on radio? Yes, and it sort of presented a bit of a, of a lisp. So uh, I remember one time when I told him we had to cut down his lines and uh, told him the reasons why, and he didn't object to that at all. Now, remember, people had this great image, and still do, of that man. And suddenly you hear somebody on there who's starting to lisp. It, it just completely uh, killed the character t- as far as the ear was concerned. You said you got a memento from him. After the, the series concluded, he had sort of a little get-together for the people who worked daily with him. And uh, the man gave me a uh, Mediterranean spice grinder of all things that uh, he had a sense of humor, and uh, he had written out and then had an engraver engrave in his uh, handwriting to Fred Essex a reminder of the daily grind, (laughs) signed Ripley. (laughs) So these are nice things to have. What would be the signature moment you could remember that made you, maybe like the story that you tell everybody, what's the the one story you tell? Well, I I like to tell stories about different... uh, actual dramatizations of uh, one of his, believe it or not, facts. 
the doctor and this nurse walking down a hall in a hospital uh, after World War One, uh, and from their dialogue, uh, we could find out that they were in a hospital for people who were shell-shocked, who had lost all memory. And from their dialogue, they even were saying that this particular man, they didn't think he, they had any hope for him to recover his memory. So they're in there with him, and he would talk with them, recognize them, but he knew nothing of what had happened before. There was a little radio on his table, and uh, they turned it on because they thought the music would be soothing. And it was playing, come to me, my melancholy baby. Suddenly the man sat up, leaned forward in his bed, and said, I wrote that. It turned out that his memory came back, and uh, he was on our show as a guest. That was awesome. That's just exactly what we wanted, Fred. Well, Rip didn't just end at 15 minutes. After the show went off the air, someone came out with an easel, and he would draw in charcoal the picture of this woman and tell a story about her and what have you. It was very interesting. The people were grossed. Then an assistant would come out and tear off the, uh, the, the, the big piece of paper, and uh, Rip would exchange, explain that he's taking it back to fix it so the charcoal wouldn't come off. Well, he had done them one the day before, and that one was already dry, so he rolled it up, and the assistant came out with it. Then Ripley chose somebody who was utterly delighted as he would give them that uh, a gift. But we would get together in the morning to go over everything that might be happening that day. Then in the afternoon, we would have our uh, live rehearsal request. In those days, everything was live. And then, of course, the show went on in the evening. Well, believe it or not, that's all true. Absolutely true. Well, thank you so much, Fred Essex, for being a, a guest on this version of the Ripley Radio Show, going back to one of the first versions of the Ripley Radio Show. Our guest on Ripley Radio. You're listening to Ripley Radio. It's an on-demand podcast. You can find us at webtalkradio.net. Maybe you found us at ripleyodcast.com. You can send us any questions or email us radio at ripleys.com.